Okay, so uh, our next speaker is from okay. Seoul National University. It's uh, Professor Hyung Nam Han, and he's going to be talking to us about pop in behavior during nano indentation. So, over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Chairman. And uh, it is to my honor to have a presentation uh, in AP, APMS workshop in Cambridge. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the Professor Harry Badesha and uh, also uh, APMS team. Okay, the title of presentation is Popping Behavior During Nano Indentation on Steel Alloys. So, my name is Hung Nam Han, and working for Seoul Western University. This work uh, was supported by the uh, uh, Korean government and the POSCO, still a company in Korea. So, this work is collaborated with the uh, uh, the white one, so I think uh, 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 so Oak Ridge National, National Laboratory in US and the Kims in Korean Government Research Laboratory and Seoul National University and Hanbad University and POSCO. So when the uh, mechanical property at small scale uh, was measured, uh, normally we use the uh, uh, nano indentation technique. So by using the uh, AFM or SPM then, so we can recognize the uh, appropriate position uh, of the material. For example, uh, each uh, special phase or each special grain uh, on steel, then so we can obtain this kind of load displacement curve. Is there any pointer? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Okay. So like this, uh, by using this uh, load displacement curve, we can obtain an intrinsic property of a special phase or a special grain, it's the mechanical response. Uh, this is a kind of the uh, fingerprint of the material. I think the uh, mechanical response of the material. So by the uh, precise analysis of this kind of the uh, load displacement curve, we can have the uh, various information uh, during the uh, mechanical uh, response of the material, I think. So, uh, in the nano indentation analysis, we must consider the two special phenomena. First one is indentation size effect, uh, and the other one is a probable effect of the uh, dislocation nucleation or dislocation source activation. Indentation size effect uh, indicate that the uh, 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 increasing the uh, nano hardness data with the decreasing of the indentation depth. Uh, it is well known that the indentation size effect. Uh, is caused by the uh, geometrically necessary dislocation underneath the indenter tip. As for uh, the uh, uh, probable effect of the uh, dislocation, uh, act, uh, nucleation or dislocation source activation during the nano indentation, uh, as, you, as shown in this figure, so if uh, the indenter size is smaller than the uh, uh, average spacing of dislocation, in this case, the, uh, there is very low probability that the, uh, the volume underneath the indenter contains existing dislocation. In this case, the starting of plastic deformation is governed by the dislocation nucleation, not dislocation source activation or dislocation multiplication. But a large indenter case, the, normally the plastic deformation was governed by the uh, dislocation source activation or dislocation multiplication. Okay. So, uh, in this presentation, I will talk on the popping special behavior in narrow indentation. So, this is a uh, normal loading uh, uh, and unloading curves uh, during the narrow indentation. In some cases, so very sudden uh, Displacement, displacement excursion occurs during the narrow indentation. This is called as popping. So this popping uh, is a kind of this softening process. So uh, this popping is uh, related to the uh, geometrical softening or material softening of the material. So I'd like to talk on that. So as you know, uh, uh, strain this Martin stick transformation. This is one of the uh, geometrical softening process. So in this case, large shear deformation occurs. Uh, the massive atom, atomic uh, massive uh, movement occurs. This can cause the uh, geometrical softening. And also, epsilon martin six transformation. In this case, massive partial dislocation movement occurs. This is one of the uh, geometrical softening events. 
And also, I'll talk on that the uh, uh, yield drop in paritic steel. This is uh, one of the uh, large geometrical sopling process. So I'd like to talk on this nano indentation popping, the relationship between that between them between the nano indentation popping and the yield drop in macroscopic uh, tensile test. Okay. The most popular case of nano indentation popping is insufficient plasticity. So as you can see, the in the nano indentation, the, the plastic deformation procedure are the first dislocation nucleation and the dislocation source activation and dislocation multiplication. So the load for dislocation nucleation is normally larger than the dislocation source activation and the dislocation multiplication. So, so after the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, what happened? So after the uh, plastic deformation, then a kind of the geometrical softening event occurred, then this can cause a, uh, 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 a non-indentation problems like this. Okay, so in this presentation, I'd like to talk on the other uh, possible source of non identity pabin in steel. As I mentioned above, so I will deal with the uh, uh, mechanical induced uh, Martin's transformation and the mechanical induced Epsilon Martin's eye transformation. And the last one, so I will talk on that the relationship between the yield drop and the non identity pabins. Okay, and the first, uh, I will talk on that. So, uh, strain induced Epsilon Martin. Uh, uh, Strain this to uh, alpha prime Martin stick transformation. We used this kind of uh, material with uh, high manganese high manganese content. So after the uh, uh, appropriate uh, heat treatment, then so we can obtain this kind of the microstructure, and uh, we carry out the uh, the combination method of uh, EBSD technique and the nano, nano indentation technique. Then so we can carry out the uh, nano indentation on each uh, ozonite phase. Okay. Then we obtain this kind of the loaded displacement curve like this. You can see the pub in here, the other pub in here, the other pub in here. I'd like to know that the uh, the uh, origin of this kind of the pub in. So red line indicate the uh, uh, hot elastic solution then. Uh, from the two uh, curves then, the initial popping is caused by the elastoplastic transitions. So uh, from the Hutchian solution then, so we can uh, obtain the uh, maximum shear stress underneath the indenter. This value was calculated by the nine gigapascal. This value is correspond to the uh, shear modulus over eight. This is very close to theoretical strength for dislocation nucleation. And also under the consideration of the, uh, indentation's probability effect then, so normally on yield specimen, the mean distance of dislocation is uh, 10 micrometer. But in this case, in the T blade is just 0.2 micrometer. The popping start uh, depth is 20 nanometer. And the uh, size of uh, ozonite grain is just one micrometer. So from those data then, so we can uh, conclude that the, uh, the first popping event is likely induced by the dislocation nucleation. But how about the second popping and third popping? So I think the, uh, this is a metastable ozonite phase. So these two poppings may be related to the uh, uh, Martin's transformation. Okay. So how do I check that? So uh, this is an initially ozonite phase. You can see. Then you can see the after nano indentation, the very clear indentation mark here. Then uh, by using the focus ion beam, then. We, we prepare this kind of the TM specimen, then we <coughs> observe the uh, TM microstructure like this. After that, so underneath the indenter then, so we observe the hard Martin side phase. And also we observe the uh, uh, gamma ozonite phase remains. So if the two phases are in the chaos orientation relationships, that means this alpha prime Martin site was transformed to a uh, gamma ozonite phase, I think. This, uh, so I confirm that the uh, Martin stick uh, phase after the transformation, uh, initially ozonite phase. So as you know, the Martin site is a harder phase than ozonite. So this is another uh, softening process, hardening process, okay? Or on the point of view 
of just the mechanical property data. Okay, but so this is uh, the vein uh, deformation uh, schematic diagram. You can see the vein deformation has one compressive axis and two tensile axis. According to the uh, uh, compressive axis, there is three vein variant like this. So if the applied stress is parallel to the uh, G direction like this, then variant selection occurs in this variant, not the others. Then large permanent deformation, large, uh, uh, large compressive strain uh, was was developed in the material. This can cause the geometrical softening. This is very simple, simple assumption. Okay, so I think the uh, special variant selection can cause the geometrical softening. Then this can cause non-indentation popping. From this very low assumption, then so we can easily calculate the uh, uh, popping depth by the uh, Martin's deformation from the TM microstructure. Then so we can obtain 25 nanometer. Uh, this is a very uh, close to the uh, uh, 20 nanometer uh, by the indentation uh, measurement, okay? But this is a very rough calculation. So as you know, the normal Martin transformation case, we must consider the uh, invariant shear deformation as well as the Bain deformation. So we must consider the 20, 24 KS variant or more NW variant and something like that, okay? So to <laughs> Evaluate the exact uh, precise for nano indentation pop in death, so you must consider this kind of the uh, deformation tensor, total deformation tensor, uh, consists consist of the Bain deformation tensor and invariant shear deformation tensor uh, on BCC crystal coordinate system. After that, though, we can uh, calculate the transformation strain tensor is like this on single loss like grain. And also, uh, we need appropriate the uh, uh, variance selection model uh, for the considering, uh, considering the uh, uh, interaction energy uh, between the applied stress and the uh, transformation strain. Then so we can, uh, from this uh, 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 numerical or the, the mathematical approach then, we can evaluate the uh, popping depth precisely, okay? Okay, uh, I'd like to show you the, the another uh, interesting uh, uh, data, uh, uh, interesting uh, popping uh, data. This is another uh, ozonite grain, the same material. After the nano indentation, we can obtain the multiple popping event. So what happens? I'd like to know that the uh, microstructure change after the nano indentation. So also by using the focus ion beam then TM technique, then we observe this kind of the microstructure. And also uh, in the here, so by using the automatic TM mapping technique A star, then we can obtain the uh, phase map and the orientation maps like this. This is an uh, indentation uh, point is here. You can see the uh, remaining ozonite phase, and also you can see the uh, various Martin's variant with different orientation. So I'd like to check the origin of this kind of the Martin's variant. Then. So we carried out uh, crystal plus DFEM for single ozonite grain. Then we obtained a, uh, a stress state underneath the indenta, the very complex stress field then. So by using the WRL theory then, uh, we can uh, uh, determine the uh, favorable variance selection. Then uh, after that, so we found that uh, just the four variant matches to theoretical data. But interesting is that the alpha one position is here. This position is just underneath the indenter. I think the first indent, first Martin transformation occurs, the this, this one. This is perfectly matches to the calculation data, okay? Uh, but this uh, Martin city occurs firstly, and then this Martin site is hard faced on then, this Martin site act as a quite uh, hard indenter. So this can, uh, make uh, uh, change the stress field of this ozonite grain, okay? So this can make a very complex Martin's deep variant the, the, uh, uh, from the calculation, I think. So this very uh, different Martin's deep variant uh, can make uh, multiple patterns uh, during the narrow indentation. Okay, let's move on to the uh, 
uh, ultranite neutron martin size transformations. So I use this kind of the material with high nitrogen. Uh, the uh, stacking portent energy value of ozonite is about 15 and millijoule per meter square. Uh, for this steel with this uh, stacking portent energy, it is, it is known that the, uh, 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 the epsilon martin size formation occurs at the initial stage of deformation. Okay. So uh, epsilon martin size is made by the stacking fault on O1 uh, plane uh, every two layers. So uh, thermal epsilon martin site has self-accommodated stacking. So after the uh, epsilon martin formation, there is no macroscopic strain. But strain induced epsilon martin site has monopartial stacking, then this can cause the large shear deformation. So I think this large shear deformation can occur, can make a, a geometrical softening. So this can make a, the small poppins during the non-indentation. I'd like to check this. Okay, before the uh, nano indentation, we carry out the tensile test like this. So after just 5% uh, tensile deformation, then so we obtain the SN orientation relationship, epsilon martin site formation, and just a 10% epsilon martin site, 10% case, also we can observe the, observe the epsilon martin site. But a 40% uh, deformation, then so we observe the uh, alpha flan martin site and double orientation relationships. Okay. This is the uh, typical example of the load displacement curve after the nano indentation of this grain. So you can see the uh, very small popping occurs at the initial stage of deformation. So I'd like to check that. This, maybe this uh, popping is related to the uh, uh, epsilon martin's formation or not. So by using the focus ion beam and also TM then, so we'd like to check the uh, uh, origin of this kind of the popping event. So just underneath the indenter, we observe the uh, alpha plan martin site, I think. The, uh, so after the uh, nano indentation, the, just underneath the indentation part is, uh, was undertaken <coughs> by the large deformation. So I think the alpha plan martin site occurred. So the, the lesion slightly outside of the large deformation zone uh, was found. Then, so we obtained a very uh, small banded structure and by using the uh, high resolution uh, TEM then, so we confirmed that the uh, epsilon martin site formation, so over 12 stacking fold, okay? Then, so uh, uh, from the analysis of the uh, <coughs> uh, 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 12 variant, uh, 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 the variant selection of the 12 partial slip, uh, and also we can calculate the, the uh, unit uh, displacement for the so, uh, one uh, stacking fold to then, so we obtained 0.8 nanometer uh, uh, the deformation along the shear, uh, along the indentation direction then, so we can consider the, that the uh, over 12 uh, uh, epsilon martin site, then this can make a, a two or three nanometer nanodetection popping. This is a very uh, reasonable uh, to comparing to the experimental data. So I think the initial stage of the popping is might be related to the uh, epsilon martin site formation, I think. Okay, and okay, so. Uh, this is the last part of the presentation. So uh, in the normal BCC steel, so uh, from the, after the nano indentation, we obtained quite large popping, of course, <coughs> after the nano indentation. So I'd like to check the, uh, uh, the relationship between the nano indentation popping behavior and the sharp yield drop of the material. As you know, the yield drop is uh, one of the uh, geometrical softening event, breaking a quarter atmosphere. Okay, so we uh, used this kind of the ferritic steel containing uh, carbon and nitrogen, and we carry out the nano indentation like this over 100 uh, nano indentation data. Then, before the nano indentation, we uh, carry out the tensile test is like this. You can see the uh, obvious uh, uh, yield drop here. So just after 6% strain, when reloaded after 
on node, just right after unloading then, yield drop disappeared, okay? But after 30 hours strain aging then, so yield drop recovers. This is a very fundamental uh, strain aging effect. But, so I'd like to check this. If popping in ferrite is related to the yield drop, analogous phenomena must exist in the case of nanoindentation. I'd like to check, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, we carry out the pre-strained uh, nanoindentation of the pre-strained material and strain aged material at room temperature, as you can see, right after pre-strained, you, you can see the, the popping disappeared. After 30 hours later, after three weeks later, so popping dis reappeared and more frequently large popping appeared. That means probability of popping increased with strain aging time. From this, the nanoindentation popping is very closely related to the uh, ma uh, macro scale yield drop. Phenomena. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Professor Han. Um, are there any questions from the floor at all? We've seen sometimes this popping occur in the well metals. In the, when you hit the austenite, you see the popping behavior. So uh, we always thought that it could be because of the both dislocation activity and transformation. How would you differentiate this two? You had to go through this fib analysis to confirm that, or how would you do that? So if you have both the phenomena, slip phenomena, and also the transformation behavior. Yeah. So uh, you know that the normal, uh, the plastic deformation for dislocation phenomena, so in narrow indentation case, the first one is dislocation <laughs> equation. And next, dislocation multiplication, or dislocation source activation and dislocation multiplication. And these two, two uh, uh, stress or two, uh, the load for this dislocation multiplication or dislocation source activation is much smaller than the dislocation nucleation. So first uh, initiation of the plastic deformation is related to the dislocation popping. But the second popping or third popping, plastic deformation occurs. So that means uh, there are so many dislocations underneath the indenta. So I'm, we must think on the different, different uh, popping source. Okay? Right, right. Um, thank you for this interesting presentation. Uh, did you try to correlate the values of the force displacement uh, curves, the pops in, and the actual energies of the events that you mentioned, like nucleation, glide, and so on? Right. Because um, this could be very useful input for crystal plasticity modelers. Yeah, so actually, so uh, in my laboratory, so I uh, I did uh, the development of the CPFM code, and so the the starting point, uh, the the motivation of this nano indentation work is the obtain an intrinsic property of this mechanical property. But so we must consider the very complex. Uh, complex uh, mechanical behavior. Uh, I mean that the uh, indentation size, but that means the geometrically necessary dislocation and also the popping behavior, so the very complex at this moment. So I want to obtain that the uh, appropriate the input data for CPFPM, but at this moment it's not easy uh, to uh, evaluate that this kind of the material parameters. Thank you. This is future work. <laughs> um, a question from uh, Ji Hong Tang. Um, since the area of force displacement curve can be considered as a work or energy, do you think it will be possible to quantitatively determine the different type of transformation energy by this popping effect? Would you read again, please? Uh, so since the uh, area of force displacement yeah. under the curve mm -hmm. can be considered as a work, Mm. or energy, uh, do you think that it will be possible to quantitatively uh, determine the different type of transformation energy of this uh, popping mm. effect? Oh, I, I don't know exactly the transformation energy. So anyway, mm. for the variant selection then, so we must consider the mechanical interaction energy uh, uh, <coughs> between the uh, externally oppressed stress and uh, 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 the, the strain. Uh, the, the transformation strain. So I think the, for the uh, 24 variant, then so I think the, uh, very same, the, the same uh, chemical, uh, chemical free energy from 
uh, also right to Martin site. Yeah. So I don't know, understand. But so anyway, so we are supposed to have a dinner with Ji Hyun Gang then, so I'll talk <laughs> on that. Uh, yeah, uh, she got another question about uh, requestration. So uh, she asked about, uh, do you see any uh, requestration during Nadong indentation? Ah, if you do, uh, can you? Recrystallization. Yeah. So, recrystallization no, is, is is a kind of the thermally activated process, except uh, this uh, dynamic recrystallization. But so during the nano indentation, I cannot uh, induce the uh, dynamic recrystallization, so it's not easy uh, to obtain the. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank thank you. Uh, I I wanted to get at the. Uh, the relationship between discontinuous yielding intention and and the pop in in you know, nano compression. Yeah. Um, so how good is so we have steels that that have uh, continuous yielding and discontinuous yielding and then and then discontinuous yielding with variations in the amount in a macroscopic tension test. Um, how how good is the correspondence uh, between uh, what you would measure in nano indentation to what you would predict in tension when you look at that spectrum of yield point elongations. Could you take a, a very small specimen yeah, of yeah, a macroscopic yeah, material yeah. and predict and, and understand its yeah. uh, yield point elongation? Yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, I'd like to do that. So I tried it, but the nano indentation is just, just one point data. But the, the tensile test and macroscopic data, so it's not easy to co co correlate this between the two, uh, two mechanical property. But the only uh, thing is the, uh, the, the relationship between them is valid, but the quantitatively uh, the matches, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, I think, at this moment. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, final question. Yeah, I, I, in fact, I have exactly the same uh, uh, question because uh, we always try to use uh, vicus hardness and to relate the yield strength. And of course, uh, through the nano intenter, we also try to get some data. And for the uh, nano particle presentation in ferrite, we also uh, try to get some information uh, in order to, to find out the deformation behavior. So, uh, but in your case, you have a uniform structure. Uh, compared with the nano uh, carbide in ferrite structure. So, mm. so maybe uh, we can relate the uh, nano uh, indenter hardness data to the yield strengths. Mm. Do you have any idea to how to uh, convert to, to the yield strength through the, mass, through the basically uh, yeah. through the mathematic uh, calculation? Yeah, but at this moment, uh, no, but okay. so, uh, so normally in uh, advanced high strength steels, there uh, the con contains a various structure in the various pages. So by using the narrow indentation that we can measure the intrinsic property for each phase, then we can compare two properties. So it's, it's, it's reasonable, I think. But macroscopic, uh, macroscopic value uh, between the macroscopic value and nano value is quite big difference at this moment. But so we can compare the uh, uh, two page or three page as a mechanical property in narrow scale. Okay, I think we're gonna to have to leave it there. If we could just thank our speaker again.